but not the Okay, welcome worry. everybody. Uh, this is our bi-weekly meeting of the Hello. UMBC Cyber Defense Lab. And today uh, we have PhD student Farah Giovanni, who's gonna talk about um, a new boardroom voting protocol that he devised um, using a previous transfer. In his dissertation, he's found uh, a couple interesting um, applications of oblivious transfer, including to voting and and also to um, mixing. Today, we're going to hear about voting. And by the way, two weeks from today, or, or I guess November 6th, no. But our, our, our next CDL meeting, um, maybe it's the 30th. I forgot, I should know. Um, no, it, it's the 13th, one week from today, sorry. Um, we're going to have a speaker from NSA talk about the security of the um, presidential election. Okay, um, Far, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um. You see my screen now? Yes, no? I can see it. Okay, thanks. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Farid, and I'm gonna talk about um, our new protocol called BBAT, self-tallying boardroom with oblivious transfer. It's a joint work with Dr. Sherman, which is a part of my work for my dissertation, which I'm planning to finish soon. Um, I'm going to start with giving the definition of boardroom voting. Um, a boardroom election is a, an election that has a small number of voters who vote remotely through a, a software, a browser, an application. And, and the important property of this kind of elections is that there is no election authority to conduct or oversee the election. Now, the image um, here um, is a good example of what we mean by boardroom election. People, like this traditionally, the boardroom election is uh, when group of people or say board of directors are in the room and trying to say uh, elect um, a new director or um, give promotion to a member. Um, I guess that's all definition. Um, now, the properties of the system that we are going to consider are um, um, uh, fairness, dispute fairness, perfect ballot secrecy, and self -telling. I'm going to briefly explain each of these now. By fairness, we, we mean that um, before everybody casts their votes, no one should be able to tally the votes. Dispute fairness is that voters should observe the election and be sure that um, there, are, there, are, there are no disputes at, at the end of the election. Ballot secrecy means that vote um, um, ballots or how each voter voted should remain secret even after the election. Now, perfect ballot secrecy, the word perfect um, here means that the only way to figure out if um, figure out a vote of a voter is only possible if all the other voters collude against one voter. And then self-telling um, is that after the vote site cast, anyone, including uh, public, um, any party that is not uh, uh, from the group of voters, should be able to compute the tally. Now, all of these um, properties would become much easier to achieve if there were an election authority involved. But as I said before, we don't have an election authority to oversee the election. Um, please interrupt me if you have any questions, if I go too fast. Um, now, um, I'm going to talk about two examples of previous work. Um, there are five or six um, important um, protocols in the previous work that um, are both self-tallying and, um, and uh, don't, do not have election authority. But these two examples um, um, more or less capture Capture all the exist uh, all the previous work. They, they they basically are as follows. Now imagine you have um, n voters which are trying to um, elect, uh, which are trying to uh, uh, vote yes or no on an item. 
each voter as, uh, is going to choose a value zero or one zero for yes uh, zero for no uh, and yes uh, one for yes and they each voter is going to compute um, g to the value vi vi being zero or one and where g is a generator of the group uh, and where the, the, the diffie hellman um, problem is hard and then each of these voters are going to publish are going to mask uh, their vote with a value which is um, designed such that um, product of all of these values are going to cancel each other and be equal to one. So in other words, each voter generates a vote and then masks it and then broadcasts it to all the other voters. And then after, after this step, each of these voters can um, compute this product, which is the um, product of votes of each voter masked by their masking value. And the result is going to be the generator of the group to the power of um, summation of the votes. Uh, this summation here is gonna um, um, is going to be the summation of all the yes votes for for the item that is going to be decided. On. Now the difference between different protocols. Now this roughly summarizes like five or six um, protocols so far. But the difference is how these um, how this um, product is computed. In in house protocol, each voter broadcasts their masking value, their mask ballot at once. But for example, in graph, they it, it is done sequentially. Voter one computes this, sends it to the second voter, and so on. So the difference in these two pro protocols, for example, is the number of rounds that should that the protocol needs to complete. Now, after this is said, so far so good. It, it was easy till here, but there is nothing that would prevent a voter to vote twice in favor of a candidate. That is um, being uh, taken care of by using zero knowledge proofs, which um, um, there are different protocols uh, to prove uh, to prove that a, a vote is between uh, from zero or one set. Um, an easy one is by just showing the proof of knowledge of the exponent. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of any of this, but after this uh, zero knowledge proof is provided by each voter, then all of the other voters can check that um, the vote is cast correctly. I'm going to pause here and wait for questions. I want to make sure that this is understood before I go forward. Now, whatever you saw, saw here is what we are not going to do in our protocol. Hi, Russ Fink here. We've got a question. So this uh, okay. product of the AI, that's a modular product, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. All of these are groups. Explicitly group. stated. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have missed that. I guess actually we missed the paper as well. These are all um, inside the group. All the operations are group operations. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Now, um, I'm going to briefly talk about ob oblivious transfer, not in detail. And there are many, many different protocols that that provide oblivious transfer. I, I'm sorry, I've got one more question. Uh, just to, so I understand this, the AIs all have to be distributed ahead of time. In other words, voters cannot generate the AIs themselves, or is there um, some way to do that where... Voters generate AIs, and each protocol defines how to do it differently. Okay, but the product of all AIs has to yes. be one module yes. of yeah. the group. So this will not tolerate a missing vote, is that correct? Oh, excellent point. No. It, none of these protocols are what's called robust, meaning that if any of the voters decide to leave the election in the middle of the election, then it, it won't uh, complete. This is also the case for our protocol, okay, so. robust. Okay, going forward, um, oblivious chance. Just, just a quick question, Farid. All the AIs are also modulo your uh, whatever the the modulus of the group, right? Yes. Okay. And one example of AI is when each say each of these um, voters compute g to the power of something, and then pass it to the other voter. The second voter gets that g to the power of something from first voter, adds its own value, and then divides by some other g to the power of something. 
Now, after these all are computed by all, all the other voters, modular and, and order of the group, it, uh, it, um, the, 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 the outcome is one, cancel each other. So oblivious transfer introduced by Rabin 1981. Um, I'm gonna just briefly explain what it does. In a one out of two oblivious transfer protocol, um, which we did, we're gonna denote by this, we have a sender and the receiver. Sender has two strings here, S0 and S1. Receiver um, selects a bit, B. Sender um, does not learn the value of the B, or in other words, sender does not learn the choice that the, uh, that the receiver makes. And then receiver only learns the value of the corresponding to the bit that uh, it chose. So um, sender has S0 or S and S1, um, receiver sends say S S0, receiver only learns S0, and the uh, um, sender does not learn, does not learn um, the value that the receiver chose. It's uh, been uh, in um, one out of n oblivious transfer, the sender has n strings. The logic is the same. You have n strings, the, the receiver chooses one, sender sends that value without knowing what value is sent. Now, um, um, is this clear? It's very important that it's clear. All right. Now, Oblivious transfer is complete. This has been proven, meaning that you can implement any uh, multi-parties protocol using just OT and no other primitive, which is very strong um, property of OT. And um, I guess considering that this is being used in different different protocols, um, on, um, online poker contract signing, comparing values of secrets, um, this is a very important application. For example, if you want to enter your ATM, um, you are communicating with an ATM, and you are not trusting ATM, you can use this comparing the value of secret protocol so that ATM doesn't learn um, your secret, but you prove to the ATM that you are the, actually the card holder. It, OT has also been used in voting before in a completely different form. It, the way it has been used is with a large election that has a, an election authority and the application of OT in that protocol is to distribute identification. For example, um, each of the voters in that protocol get a, a number and identification using OT so that they are registered as a, a legitimate voter, something that we've been hearing a lot these past days. Um, now, um, I'm going to start talking about protocols, uh, our, our protocol, but I just want to know if there are any questions before I go forward about OT. No questions. Now, we saw that in existing protocols, um, voters generate their vote. They have this liberty of generating the vote, but then they use zero knowledge proofs um, to prove that they've, uh, the, the vote that they're gener they've generated is correct. We, we do not do that. We do not let voters to generate their votes, and therefore we do not need them to prove their correct, the correctness of their vote. EWAT um, um, uses, uses oblivious transfer in, in, for two reasons, provide ballot secrecy and, uh, and guarantee vote correctness. The, the way it works is as follows. Ballots are generated for the voter. Now, how about does that mean? If I'm voting for um, for a candidate, Bivot creates value, creates a ballot for that candidate, and I can just select that candidate. And since I have not created that ballot, I do not need to prove anything about its correctness because it has been generated for me. Um, which means at the end, after the votes are distributed among voters, none of the voters have enough information about the ballots, about how ballots are created to be able to to be able to cheat in favor of a candidate. This is the this is where we use OT, and this is the main differentiator of our protocol with the existing work. Now, pivot is obviously self-tallying, and um, after the votes are cast, no uh, any any voter can tally the votes. And um, we are using the multi-party homework encryption, 
And as a result, only if all the votes are considered, the tally would be crypt. I'm going to talk about this in detail later. And um, something that I forgot to mention, in the previous work, in in, in Howes and Grass and many others, um, the elections... Just a are... minute, Farid. Sure. Uh, uh, so the ballots uh, uh, presented to each user, user is different from the ballot presented to, to other user? Like no. Scrambling the order or something? Ballots, uh, the list of ballots are, that are created is the same for all the users. So you are, okay. All the voters. I'm going to explain it in detail what, what, how, that, how that works. I would think that, that each voter uh, vo voting for a, a one on one ballot might have a different meaning than voting a one on a different ballot. Kind of like punch scan. I, I don't know if anybody remembers that. I, I, I don't. But... No, it's like, you know, I mean, even on the exam, sometimes we tend to give, put the questions in a different order, right, so that you cannot just... It's a multiple choice, right? So that you don't just uh, look at the next guy and uh, share oh, it in the same bubble, right? Oh, I see. No, the, the mapping of the voters to the the mapping of the candidates to the ballots is the same. It's a fixed value. And actually, I'm going to talk about it. It has been committed to, and it is one list for everybody. All right. The last property that I'm going to talk about is that um, in the existing work, um, Protocols only can handle, natively can handle yes or no elections. If you have more than two candidates, then you have to use extensions to the existing work. But BVAT can handle many, as many candidates um, in, in, a simple, uh, in a single election. Any questions? All right, adversarial model. Um, we assume that um, we have authentication, authenticated channels. Communications are public. Other voters can observe um, how um, a voter and a party called distributor or voters among themselves can uh, communicate. Um, adversary could be an outside party or any of the voters. It, uh, adversary is cautious. The voters and the adversary can try to cheat in favor of a candidate or learn how others voted, but they don't want to get caught. And this um, this comes with the nature of boardroom voting. And I, if you consider the example of board of directors, nobody would risk um, to be caught cheating. And some uh, one uh, obvious assumption: adversary cannot break standard cryptography functions, and um, Again, because of the nature of the election, nobody is trying to sabotage or delay or do denial of service to the election. Um, we are, BWAT uses a multi-party group homomorphic encryption, um, which at the end, all of the voters are gonna create keys and the set of voters are gonna have a public key. Now this key generation step can be used in more than one election. Again, um, this is also a differentiator between the existing work. When um, uh, other, pro other protocols design, generate keys at the beginning of the protocol, it, it has to be done for each election. In BVAT, you, you can generate the keys as long as the voters are the same, of course. You can generate the key once and use it for multiple elections. It, it, it's not, they're not one time use um, the keys. Now, key generation um, is as follows. Each voter chooses a random value, bi. This is going to be the private key from the group. Again, the group is a group that um, such that Diffie-Hellman um, problem is hard. And then um, g being the generator of the group to the power di is broadcast to the all of the voters. Now, each of the voters receive um, g to the di from the rest of the voters and the value which is the product of all of these is going to be the public key of set of the voters. Encryption um, is quite straightforward. Uh, if a voter wants to encrypt M, it is going to choose, uh, choose a random value again from the group and then multiply M to the E, E being the public key of the set of the groups to that newly chosen random value. And then decryption is interesting, not as straightforward. So for this value to decrypt, each voter, each of the voters 
should publish their decryption share. Decryption share is um, for for this uh, in encryption tuple is g to the x i to each voter's um, uh, to the inverse of each voter's private key. So each voter should publish this value, and then after this is received, um, product of the decryption shares times um, the encryption of the message is going to be decryption of M. The important property of this is that you can tell unless everybody sends their decryption sheet, the, the decryption share here, this M would not decrypt. Which goes back to what um, um, uh, Russ um, asked about. If one of the voters refuses to send this, then the, the vote, the tally would not decrease, which again, the, pro, the, the protocol is not robust. Any questions here? Okay, so so I have a question. Um, and I think this is just a notation thing. Uh, are the D sub I the same thing as the A sub I in one of the earlier slides? Or do I have that completely wrong? Um, G, uh, well, it's not an, it's not a typo in the notation. I tried to like differentiate that from the, our protocol, but you are right. Now, in here, G to the um, XI to the DI in this concept, in this protocol is similar to AI in the previous work. I tried to, um, oh, I get it. Okay. Abstract so that, that had to that do with AI. previous work entirely. Okay. Got yes. It. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with the previous work. Now, they, in, um, in here, for example, in uh, um, oh wait a minute. In here, um, in house protocol, how they do it is quite similar to the AI is quite similar to what we do, but they do it for each election. They have to do it for each election, so it is not a key generation set person. All right. Any other questions? Going forward, um, so. Um, the protocol has four steps after the keys are generated and so on. It has four steps. The first two are, um, okay, let me explain without any further ado. We have N voters and M candidates. The first step of the protocol is election setup. Um, one voter is going to be selected as the distributor. Distributor it can be any of the voters. We do not assume any trust assumptions about the distributor. The distributor, um, similar to any other voter, it just needs to have a machine that is able to compute all of this point. Then, step, sub step two, voters agree on a security parameter lambda, which is going to be the number of primes that is going to be associated with each candidate. I should have said this before, but each candidate in the election is going to be represented by one prime, one or more prime. In this case, each candidate is going to be represented by lambda primes. So E chooses lambda times M primes. M is the number of candidates, and we have lambda candidates per prime. So D chooses uh, lambda M primes, such that the, the biggest, the largest prime in the selected primes to the power N is less than um, order of the group. This is to um, eliminate reduction modulo um, order of the group. What is B? B is the maximum, is the largest of these points. Oh, I see, okay. But the goal is to avoid reduction mod um, Q. It is going to be obvious why we need this. And uh, oh, um, we've uh, experimented these numbers, it is, um, these numbers are viable. You can have, um, now assuming that this is a boardroom election and the, the number of voters are say less than fifty, we can we can easily find lambda m primes in a secure group that satisfy this property. So you can choose lambda accordingly. Um, election. Okay, can n be bigger than m? There's, there's no, there's yeah, no sure. restriction on M no, versus no, M. No, no, okay. yeah. no. Any, 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 any N and any M. Election setup continued. 
Now, after this... Um, Just a quick, quick one, Farid. Sure. You are requiring B raised to N, right? So the number of orders has to be uh, uh, necessarily restricted, right? We um, well, we cannot have n say to the thousand. Um, we cannot have thousand waters. I mean, we could then be the group that we are selecting, the group that the, the PLMN assumption should be huge. Right. So, 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 so there are limits, right? I mean, for, to, to yeah, the practical yes. usage of... Yes. But considering that this is a boardroom election, then you're not going to have like 10,000 voters in this election. Right. So I think practically speaking, you would put a limit on the number of bits that a prime number could have, and then you'd be able to know, and that would exactly. be a function of how many voters you would anticipate to have in the election. Yeah. We have one example in the paper. I didn't put it here for just... Not to add complication, but oh yeah, you're right. There are limits, but if you get to choose a larger, huge group, then then the limit can also move. Um, any any questions? Any other questions? All right, election setup. Now, after those lambda primes are selected, the distributor D associates each lambda of those primes to one candidate. So we have here M candidates, we have lambda P, M lambda primes. Um, we are gonna choose, um, the distributor is gonna choose lambda groups, uh, groups of size lambda of those primes and associate it to each candidate. And then, um, Distributor is going to mask each of these primes. It's going to choose a random value again from the group S and compute um, each prime to the G to the S. This is similar to the encryption that we saw, but the purpose here is for masking and S is fixed for all the primes. After all of this is done, D commits to, the, to M, M being this mapping here, and the random value S. Question? All right. And then step two, vote selection. After this mapping is um, um, created, users, uh, voters are going to choose uh, their candidate. And they are going to do by choosing in here, say, if they're trying to vote for candidate one, they are going to choose a value or an index between one and lambda, and then send that index to the distributor, and then receive that prime in a masked form from the distributor. And this is what we consider as ballot. This is why um, the voter does not have any choice or does not know how to create a ballot because mapping is masked. The prime value is masked, and because of all of these, there is no need for any proof of correctness of the ballot. I'm gonna pause here. This is um, the main main point of the proof. Any questions? So Farid, in other words, you're saying that the, the selection is indicated by the index uh, of the prime, uh, am I right? Yes, the selection is the voter um, um, is going to choose a, an index between uh, one, one and lambda if the voter is going to vote for candidate number one. And using that index, say... So, so he wants to vote for some other candidate two, then it's lambda plus one to two lambda and so on and so forth, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if, if a voter wants to, say, vote for this candidate, the index is going to be chosen from this range, lambda plus one, two, till... To lambda. Okay, so 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 that labeling is done, right? You know who is candidate one, who is candidate two, and so on and so forth. Exactly. So in other so words, you you are you are you are assigning a handle, namely the index, to each candidate, right? Yes. Okay. And these uh these prime sets, if you will, are distributed ahead of time, and they're public knowledge. Is that correct? Primes are not. Primes are hidden. Primes are hidden till votes are chosen and committed to. 
what user sees is say um, C1, 1, C1, 2, C1, dot, 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 lambda. And then. Right. But those C particular, but who comes up with those particular primes P1, P2, up to P lambda? Distributed. Generated. This one okay, of the, so, so those are known. Okay. So those values are known. Known to the distributor, not to the voters. Okay, then I, I guess I'm missing something because how, how am I supposed to choose C1 versus C2 unless I know what the primes are for C1 and for C2? You, uh, you know C1, you know the candidate you are trying to choose, right? Yeah, that's right. Right. right? right. And then the, your candidate is going to be associated with indexes 1 to lambda. You just see the index of the prime. Okay, you say, okay. well, that's, so, so suppose Dinajay and I want to both vote for c1 are we both going to see the same set of primes yes yep okay so then if i know the set of primes then i can compute things like inverses of the primes on the group can't i then use that to figure out how you, might, but you, you, do not, you don't know what the primes are yet you don't know the primes yet okay I, all right all right committed to but you don't know them you know the indices okay i know the indices great Actually, what you mentioned, uh, Ras, is a, a, a valid um, um, threat that we are mitigating in the latest step, but they don't see the prime yet. And now, at the end of this vote selection step, all, all each voter sees is their a prime that they have chosen in a masked form. Nothing else. They choose an index, they receive this from the distributor. Okay, vote selection, and now after this is received by each voter, they're going to cast their votes. To cast their vote, each candidate is going to encrypt the masked prime. Encryption is done by the homomorphic multi-party homomorphic group encryption. Um, each voter is going to compute this tuple and broadcast it uh, to everybody. The, in, the value that the distributor encrypts is different because distributor doesn't need to mask the prime because distributor knows the prime. So the value G to the S, in the, which is there for the votes of all the other voters, is not in the vote of the distributor. Any questions? And these are, these are broadcasted to all the other voters. Each voter broadcasts this tuple, and then um, distributor broadcasts uh, this tuple. So I'm a little slow on this. Um, so if we go back to slide 11, the key point here is we are using oblivious transfer between the distributor to the voter to ensure that the distributor does not learn the preferences of the voter. Is that correct? Exactly, yes. And the, the voter does not learn the value of, and uh, does not learn them any of other masked primes. I'm going to um, right. explain why that just, is important. Just as a suggestion, I, I think this, this picture, since my eyes go to the box, it should okay. be a little bit better visually presented that what the voter is receiving back are uh, lambda m possibilities, but they may only choose one because that's how oblivious transfer works. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Just, just a little bit of a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All. Yeah. Got it, got it. All right. Thanks. They receive only one mass prime, but, but they know the indices. They, they are sent a bunch of primes, but they may only yeah, recover they, one exactly. of them. Okay. They uh, they get the map mapping as is, but they only can decrypt one of the values, which is their choice. Right. I, I think the word receive is defined very specifically when you're talking about oblivious transfer. Understood. Okay. Yeah, I see. But I see. I'm gonna fix this. Yeah. I, I, thanks. Um. Any questions on this slide? Basically, this says that after each um, voter receives this value, like putting W's transfer aside, after receiving, after receives this value, 
each vote is going to encrypt it by the public key of the set of the group and then broadcast it to everyone. So we'll do the distributed, but without the masking. Moving forward now, um, after this uh, votes are cast and committed to, right? So um, distributor first is going to broadcast um, their decryption share. And then all of the other voters are gonna broadcast their decryption share. We've, we had to separate these two from each other because if the voters were to distribute their broadcast shares at the same time with the vote distributor, then vote distributor knowing all the other values could tally the uh, could decrypt the tally and change its vote. To avoid that, it commits to its decryption share by broadcasting it first, and then after each voter receives the receives the decryption share from the distributor, they send um, their um, decryption share. After this is after this step, and then he publishes just M, not these values. He publishes just M M being this this mapping, and now each of the voters can check and verify if they got the prime, if they got a prime that corresponds to the uh, to the candidate of their choice. I'm gonna go back and explain this one more time. After this mapping is revealed by the distributor, since voters have this value, right? They can go ahead and check that, okay, this prime, masked prime, corresponds to the candidate that I chose. If it is not the case, they can, they can object. And this is necessary to resolve any disputes. If nobody objects here, then, it is all the other voters can be sure that they have received the vote. They have received the ballot corresponding to the candidate of their choice. After this step, after this is verified and committed to, or after um, this is um, published and nobody objects, then the other two value, G to the N minus one times S and S is revealed by the distributor. Now, one may argue that if you just publish this S value, each voter can go ahead and compute. But if we do it here by the distributor, we are reducing the number of exponentiations for the whole protocol. But this is just for the efficiency purposes, I think the driving secret. Any questions so far? Should I explain one more time or it is clear? Um, I'm insisting for questions um, for my own sake because I hope you will, you will find flaws. I hope not, but if you do, I'm gonna be sad and happy at the same time. Okay, going forward. Now all, now all of the values are broadcasted and, and vote can be tallied by any of the voters. The tallying is going to be as follows. This is, um, the encrypted vote of the distributor. These are encrypted votes of the, all the other voters, right? We have n times g to the s here, which is why we need g to n minus one times n g to, uh, n minus one times g to the s, which is why we need this value. And then this is the decryption share of the vote distributor. This is the decryption shares of all the other voters. This product is going to be product of the primes. Primes which correspond to the candidates. Now, it is possible that some of these primes are the same. For example, if the voter number one chose exactly the, the prime or the ballot that the voter number two did, then these are gonna be, say, P1 to, a, to, ex, to an exponent. And 
we have two uh, two restrictions here. One of them is that summations of these m primes should be equal to one because each of the voters voted once, and then none of these vote none of these values can be larger than n because um, no um, none of the candidates can receive more than n votes. This is a small value, and it is easily um, uh, and any any of the voters can um, easily factorize this, compute these a's, and each exponent corresponding to the prime is the number of votes that um, is the number of votes that that candidate received. This is the end of the protocol. I'm going to explain and performance. So, and Farid, uh, so uh, uh, because everybody has to factorize, right? Voters are learning uh, what what other primes were associated with uh, the other candidates, right? Besides the yeah. candidate that they chose. Yeah, they can, but there is not no harm in that. The, everybody has uh, voted, and uh, nobody can pinpoint uh, or nobody can associate a prime to a voter. So there is no harm in, in revealing all the values. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any other question? Okay, um, that was it. That is that is BWAT protocol. Um, here we're also assuming that the number of voters is small enough that it's possible to factor. Yeah, yeah. Now um, we compare the performance of BWAT to the significant previous work. Which, which have the similar properties, self tallying and no election authority and boardroom voting. Um, obviously none of the exist none of the previous work uses OT. We have N minus one sessions of oblivious transfer. Exponentiation. <clears throat> there are uh, two protocols by how which have less than uh, less exponentiation than our protocol, but they have significant amount of zero knowledge proofs. So till here, till the third row, if we if we somehow compare the, each OT session to one, roughly, very roughly to each um, zero knowledge proof, then the performance is comparable to the best one here. Now, the communication rounds or the broadcast rounds, ours is better than Graph, but has two more rounds than uh, Hollow's protocol. Um, this is um, um, the, the two of these um, broadcast rounds, however, are only done by one member of the group of voters. In other words, Two of these broadcasts are done just by the distributor. The rest are done by all the other voters. And one last comment here is that all of these four protocols are designed for yes or no elections. If they want to say have five candidates, they have to have extensions to these and the numbers are gonna, are gonna go up, but not comparable to what is already there. EWAT on the other hand can, uh, can handle any number of the any number of candidates. Any question? Some um, notes on the security. So we said that we have to have um, lambda primes per candidate. Here is why. The distributor knows the prime to the candidate mapping, right? And then in some elections, for example, um, uh, Trump-Biden election. We know the distributor knows for sure that each of these voters are going to get at least one vote. Then, knowing the mapping, the distributor can choose to vote using the power of a prime that, say, corresponds to uh, Trump or Biden, and reduce one vote from the opponent. And nobody can, pre can prevent or detect this. But when we have lambda primes, per candidate, 
the distributor cannot be sure that this P2 here has been used. So the distributor would not risk using a, an inverse of the prime that it is not sure that has been used by any of the workers. Hence, lambda primes per candidate. Questions? What is the practical value of lambda? How many do you need to use typically? So the best case is that you have um, lambda equal to the number of waters. But um, this is this is where the the risk is a um, hundred percent. If you try to do this, you are gonna be a hundred percent cut. But the practical is having m times lambda larger than number of waters. Oh, that's a serious restriction, right? Number of waters. Uh, okay, so this is all for small spaces, right? These are yes, exactly. Again, this is boardroom, which is why. Actually, the, the nature of the boredom election is the reason that we can use oblivious transfer in voting. We cannot have oblivious transfer when the protocol is designed for millions of people. For example. Right. So yeah. if the number of participants is high, then you cannot use it oblivious is not, transfer. It is not efficient. It's going to be expensive. Right. right. This and it's the case for all the other, um, all the existing ones. So it's not a restriction for BY. It is the nature of the boredom election. All right, disputefulness. Um, all the communications are public and authenticated. Um, nobody can manu manu manipulate the, the mask primes without the knowledge of the mapping. This, the third item is very important. If two of the voters collude together, then they can find um, this masking value. But if they collude together, they can only um, um, recover two of the votes, so their um, malicious collaboration will not create any benefit to any of the candidates. In other words, if the, uh, if two voters collude, they cannot do any better than voting honestly. Again, hiding the necessary information from the cheating party. Um, distributor commits to mask uh, S and Farid. Yes, sir. Sorry, just a quick question. If more than two collaborate, right? Can they have, have no, can no. they affect? Any number of any of the voters cannot if they collab if they collude, they cannot do better uh, compared to um, what would have happened if they voted honestly. Any number. Any number. Oh, okay. I mean, not any number. If you have n minus one collaborators, then I think you can do whatever you want. I have to think on that but well we are not considering that right yeah, okay right and then multi-part the homomorphic encryption guarantees that all the votes should be included in the tally if the tally decrypts means that all the votes are are considered are, are considered and included in the in the in the tally and one last item which i have forgotten to put here is that at this step if anybody has any objections to the votes that they have received they should object or we don't have any dispute. So considering all of these, the protocol is dispute-free. Ballot secrecy, why is there? Oblivious transfer, as we discussed, hides the choice of the voter from the distributor. And each voter encrypts their vote before broadcasting. And partial tally, as we saw, is only possible if all the other voters collaborate against a group of voters. What I mean by that is, in here, um, after this is um, revealed, say ten of these can ten of the voters are trying to figure out how the other ten have voted, have voted, and then they can reveal their vote. Say, okay, I voted that, um, and it's voted uh, to, the, to the to that candidate, and then reduce those numbers and figure how the other ten candidates voted. So partial tally is not possible, hence um, ballot secrecy. That, Two properties that our protocol does not provide, neither do uh, four of the five existing previous work. One of the first one is robustness, which was pointed by us. If any of these uh, voters say, okay, I'm out, the tally would not um, decrypt. Coercion resistance um, is not, uh, the, the protocol does not satisfy because 
the communication that is happening between waters can be used as receipts. So um, a, a querser can check if a voter has voted in favor of the candidate that the querser wants. Um, as I said, B-vote is not robust or, uh, or uh, question resistant. Um, and this last slide and last table compares to um, compares b to the existing self-tallying self boardroom protocols that do not have election authority. The only protocol that does better than ours is um, protocol by a student of how which has robustness. Um, the problem that, again, Russ pointed out. Actually, it is, they are not uh, robust. They, they have a mechanism for a case that a voter has decided not to continue. The mechanism is such that none of, the, uh, not all of the items, not all of the steps of the protocol need to be repeated. So if, if, their, if uh, their protocol has four steps, and the, um, one of the voters decide to leave the voting at last step, they have to redo steps, say, three and four. Um, our protocol does better than the other in regarding fairness, which I explained how. Um, none of these are um, coercion, coercion resistant. Any questions? That was the last slide that I had. Uh, getting back to the question about number of collaborators, if you have K collaborators, then they can't get more than an advantage of K. And this exactly. is true even if K equals N minus one. So like if everybody wanted to vote for Trump, they could, they could have just voted for Trump. But if oh, K yeah, yeah, people- Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. No matter how big the, the number of colluders are, they cannot do any better than voting honestly. Thanks. And just to put in a plug for one of my other projects, um, with David Shaw and some other people, we're developing a voting system called Vote XX, which is uh, coercion resistant. Any other questions, comments? Isn't this the best um, voting protocol that you've all seen in your life? So, yes, uh, good uh, job. Thanks. Yeah, it's really good. I would I would ask um uh let's see here a minute. So just in general, like how does this improve on other systems that are out there and what do others do better? And I uh, know <clears throat> you spoke about number of rounds and exponentiations and things like that, but you know, number of can I'd like to see some other comparisons like number of candidates, uh which systems are robust versus not robust. Uh, which are in fact uh, quantum resistant, and which which are not, oh, okay. and uh, which ones are centralized versus decentralized. So I get the sense this is a very centralized model. My other uh, comment in here is that um, uh, I would say the model is everybody is honest but curious, and in particular, there's no way to detect any kind of an error in the protocol. So if somebody deliberately uh, jams the protocol or gums it up, there's no way to identify who did that. Exactly. It, okay. We are not the, we, we do not now again. I'm going to repeat myself here because of the nature of the election. We, we do not consider denial of service. Right? Voters can, as you said, add a random value and nobody can detect where it comes from, which this property is there for two reasons lack of election authority and the need for ballot secrecy. Now, and another thing that our protocol doesn't use zero knowledge proof that could go away. That is not there for the existing world because they are using one Z ZKP for each vote, but ours don't, doesn't do that. Um, having to check one zero knowledge proof for each vote by all the other voters is, is, can be considered um, expensive, which our protocol doesn't compared to the other. None of the what they can. None of the protocols that I talked about are centralized. All of them are decentralized, in, including ours. None of them are quantum resistance because they have to have. Um, they have to rely on, say, if you have an assumption or some other um, algebraic property that are known to be to, to break under 
um, with a quantum computer. Farid. Um, yes, sir. Ha have you thought about uh, including uh, uh, range voting or choice voting? I can indicate my first choice or and second choice and third choice. Oh, um, we can. Uh, that's a very good point. We can, but then it should be the case for all the voters. For example, if we say voters can have three choices, then each of the voters should choose three candidates. Because then the number of votes, if we say each voter has... Yeah, no, I understand, but, but, but your method will allow uh, that extension, right? Yes, it will. Yeah. The other, other methods will not allow that extension, so you should point it out in the table. Actually, yeah, we should, yeah. And because uh, I think that range voting is supposed to be more powerful, right, than just your uh, normal voting. Yeah, that's excellent point. Thanks a lot. Uh, I guess that's it. If there aren't any other questions. Okay, thank you very much for a nice talk. Um, and next week we have another CDL talk, which is gonna be really interesting um, on the security of the presidential election by the head official at NSA in charge of security. Okay, thanks. Thanks everyone. Thanks Farid. Sure, thanks. Bye -bye.